Well, good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you, family, and welcome to Gethsemane Baptist Church. Welcome home this morning. It is always good to see each and every one of you in God's house. Amen. And it is always exciting when we come together to worship as a church body, to praise God for His goodness, His mercy, and His love, and give thanks to Him for all that He has done. This is Palm Sunday. And as scripture and history declares it was the day of Christ's triumphant entry into Jerusalem, we read in Luke's gospel, and when, he, and when he was come nigh, even now, at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. What a sight that must have been to behold, to hear the cheering and the rejoicing. Soon there would be palms being waved by excited crowds as Jesus approached Jerusalem on a donkey's back amid shouts of the people's praises. However, we all know what would come soon. Later that very same week, that cheering crowd would turn into calls for his crucifixion. As he would be taken to a mock trial, condemned to die, and then to suffer on Calvary's hillside, Golgotha, the place of the skull. That week's end must have seemed so dark for Christ's disciples, for those that followed him and those that loved him. They could not comprehend what was to come next, though. For we know that Christ rose triumphantly from the dead on the Sunday to come, conquering sin, death, hell, and the grave forever, and making way God's plan of salvation so that we could be forever free by the sacrifice of the perfect blood of Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, the light of the world, the light of heaven itself, the light of all life from which all darkness must flee, the light of the Father shone forth for all to see. Hallelujah. Christ has won the victory forevermore. Amen. He is alive. Hallelujah, crown him with many crowns, the high king of heaven. He is our savior, and he is our risen Lord. And the church shouted, Amen. Amen. All right, let's pray. Precious Lord, please put your, your healing hand on the sick. Put your arms around the bereaved. Lord, just bless this service. Uh, it's Palm Sunday. Uh, Jesus came into Jerusalem to save our souls. God bless all the people here, and thank you for being here to learn the word. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. So, are, are y'all all happy? Y'all doing good? Okay. I want your palms up. Put them up. And I want to hear you shout and scream. I want it to come from your toenails. I want to hear Hosanna in the highest. I want to hear it. I want them to hear it. So give it to me. One, two, three. Good job. <clears throat> we are going to roll through announcements and then we'll talk a little bit. You can see Marilyn today for your Duck Strong magnets. You can see Shauna for your Duck Strong keychains. Both benefiting day. Keychains are $5 each. Magnets are $10 each. Saturday, July the 2nd at 2 p.m., Jason Reynolds will be here to do a benefit concert. And that will be for Dad, obviously. Um, Sheena has orchestrated the concert, and we're so appreciative of all she is doing to help Dad. It just means so much. Um, please save the date. Start inviting people to be here. There are expenses needed with Dad that are not covered. Every dollar helps. As it goes to more than only medical bills, it goes towards things he's going to have to have when he gets home, such as a lift chair, medical bills that are not covered by Medicare, amongst other many, many other expenses. It's not cheap to need medical help, is it? Um, we want to thank you all again for your generosity and support thus far. Um, please continue. If you need the nursery, let me know. I can open the door for you. If you think you have COVID or if you don't feel well, please stay home. If you test positive, please stay home a minimum of how long? Two you got it. So with that, we're going to welcome our Mevo family. On the count of three, we're going to tell them we miss you. Are you ready? One, two, three. We miss you. Yes, we do. <laughs> so now we're going to welcome somebody that's very special and very much loved. We're going to welcome your pastor. On the count of three, we're going to tell him we'll see you soon. Are we ready? One, two, three. We'll see you soon. 
Now we're going to tell them we love you. Are we ready? One, two, three. We love you. Yes. Good job. I see Marilyn waving the bucket like it's a flag. So if anybody missed turning in their offerings, <laughs> she's going to come around. <laughs> um, so with that, we need your help. We need you to help us help a farming family that we love dearly. The repair family is going through the valley with their baby, Reagan. She was born a few months ago. Reagan is continuing to heal from her open heart surgery. This little baby has been through more in her few months than some people go through in a lifetime. Do we have any slides? Oh, okay. I'll wait. <laughs> um, it's okay. She has had open heart surgery. She's been diagnosed with Down syndrome. She's beat COVID. Reagan's mom says that a viral panel has revealed that Reagan has an old school coronavirus. Um, it has severely damaged her lungs and has bought her an extended stay at UVA. Um, she's on a high flow oxygen. She has a pair is going great, but now she's having to fight this virus on top of everything else. Her mom asks that we pray for her tiny body to fight this virus and that God will heal her lungs. Um, this family is facing the unimaginable. Let's show them who we are in Jesus. Let's show them his love, his compassion. Your help is witnessing to them. Please donate if you're able. The coronavirus has bought them. Oh, I already said that. I don't know why it's on there again. Huh. Uh, there is a sheet in the back that details what they need if you don't want to do financials. You can also bring items. Um, so please, 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 please pray for them. Her heart rate dropped last night. Her is in need of a lot of prayer. So we will be doing communion today after the message. If you have to join us live, it will be featured on the live stream as well. We will be doing message, communion, then the invitation so that we can keep you on for communion. Um, have your bread and juice ready, Mevo family. Each child's present today will receive a cookie decorating kit to do at home. You can see me after church. And I know that if you're an adult, don't be coming to me on your kneecaps and acting like you're a child because I know better. <laughs> I feel this is worthy, worthy of reminding you about, but before I say it, I'm not referring to anybody in particular at all. This is not dedicated to the ones that have visited in the past, but we just ask if you visit Dad, one, please don't go for a visit. If you're sick, two, please. Hold on, we're going to go back to one because that includes seasonal allergies, sinuses, and all that. Um, the new COVID variant is hiding behind those symptoms. Number two, please keep your visits to 20 minutes at the request of his therapist. Number three, please call or text before you visit just to make sure it's a good time. Text him, not, not me. <laughs> uh, please try to visit between 5 to 8 p.m. just so we can have family time. We appreciate your understanding and cooperation. Our main goal is to get him well and to get him back here as quick as possible. Now we're going to talk a little bit about our favorite fighter. Dad continues to work hard. Lem says he is encouraged at how strong Dad is and how hard he is working. Dad has a range of motion in his legs that is very impressive to his physical therapists. He has every nurse in that building wrapped tightly around each finger. <laughs> um, one even brings him meals. Last Sunday was Spaghetti Sunday for him. Then he had Taco Tuesday. You can't tell me that nurses don't care for their patients. They deserve respect and they deserve a round of applause. Let's hear it. Dad had an appointment last week with the infectious disease doctor, Dr. Nichols. He said that Dad's pulse is perfect, blood pressure a little low, but it's normal for him. He can still hear the murmur, no big deal. Um, he's on two antibiotics, so he'll be finished later this week. His legs look excellent. They're not hot. They're not red. They're not, there's no sign of infection. Thank God for that. Dr. Nichols stated that he is aggressively treating the infection and acting as though it was in the valve, even though it was not. Thank God for that as well. He will be rechecked on April 29th to make sure the infection is gone and is staying gone. So we need to pray for that. He stated that he knows the infection came from his feet. He will have an appointment this week with vascular to possibly, hopefully, remove the staples and the sutures. Let's pray that they do that because it would help with the pain that he's been experiencing. 
Taylor from Vascular told me this week that he will be sore that day, but it should subside. Of course, I'll keep you updated on Facebook the day of his appointment, and I will keep you updated next Sunday. He has an appointment with cardiovascular in May that we need to start praying for now. Every time we see Dad, he is stronger. His pain is better. He's even weaning himself off of the pain medication. Please pray he will be successful in that. He's working hard to get back to you. Let's continue to pray for him fervently. So discussion time. I'm not going to stand up here and talk to you for a long time. We have a message from Dad, communion to do, and I just want to tell you that we love you. We speak and pray life and hope over you. Maybe you felt like it's pointless to keep believing, pointless to keep hoping that your breakthrough is coming. It may feel useless to keep loving, serving, giving, praying, and praising. You may be literally on the verge of calling it quits. But listen to me. Don't quit. Don't stop. Don't give up. Press him towards a mark. God sees, he knows, and he cares. I read that when David faced Goliath, he knew that it wasn't the size of the giant in front of him that mattered. It was the size of the God inside of him. It wasn't his job to be better than anyone else around him. It was his job to be faithful to what God called him to do and the way that God called him to do it. When you face a giant, remember that like David, someone bigger than the giant of adversity is on your side. You may be pushed, you may be pushed out of the nest of your comfort zone but you are safe in the shadow of God's wings. I gotta figure out where I was, hold on. Oh, there we go. It can be so hard to keep trusting when you can't understand why and you can't see how, when it feels like you've been forgotten by people and by God, when you're damaged in a situation, when it feels like life and things are just unfair, when you feel like you've been betrayed, when obedience is hard work, when you feel like you can't catch a break, when it feels like your faithfulness and hard work are rewarded with headaches, when you have no strength to get back up after being knocked down again, I know it's hard. We've stood there and seen those scenarios within the past few months. But hear me, your faith is based on your trust, not understanding. You might not get it right now, but God is doing something that is beyond what you could ever wish or dream. One day, someday soon, you'll see exactly why you went through what you're going through now. You'll see how he always works things out for your good and for his glory, how he will part the Red Sea and he will part the rain clouds. You don't even have to stay strong. That's his job. All you have to do is continue to serve and believe that he is exactly who he says that he is. If you don't fill your mind with prayers, it will be filled with worry, anxiety, and resentment. But trust me, the blessings will overflow if you stay faithful. If you want God to lead you, you have to be willing to follow. So on this Palm Sunday, I want you to remember you are graven on the palms of his hands. I want you to remember that your walls are continually before him. So with that, huge announcement time. Are we ready? Yes. Amen. Okay. Dad, are you ready to tell the people about your big news? Nope. Ha ha ha. Yeah, I will. <laughs> good morning, everybody. And so good to be with you today. And uh, what a joy to be able to bring you the message. But Tiff said something about some kind of special news or something of that nature. Well, yeah, uh, guess what? There's going to be a new pulpit in yeah, Gethsemane Baptist Church next Sunday, a beautiful new acrylic pulpit with a tree logo in the center, and it's going to be beautiful. Well, what else is going to happen? I'm going to be there to preach behind it. Surprise! I'm getting out of Liberty Ridge next Saturday. That's the plan. Things accelerated, and I will be at GBC on Easter Sunday. Now, if you're going to clap, go ahead and do it now. Okay, you stop that. <laughs> so anyway, it's going to be a lot of fun and uh, looking forward to being in the house of the Lord. Today is, I want to talk to you about man of sorrows. Now, we'd ask you to do this. I cannot know whether you're applauding or not. So to ensure that you don't miss the message, uh, I know you folks 
You like to give it to hand clap throughout the message, and you do a great job, and keep that fire. But today, let's do something a little different. If you would just hold your applause, and if you want applause, not, not necessary, at the end of the message, you can do that. Then we're going to be going right into communion, and then Tom will lead you in a season of invitation. Man of Sorrows, that's what I want to share with you today from Isaiah chapter 53, 1 through 6. You know, as I know, we begin this week. This is the most important week in the life of Jesus, Passion Week. The day or the week that he would walk the path to the cross. You know, it would culminate at the cross, but it would not end at the cross. And certainly we can rejoice in that. For on the third day, thank God he arose, defeating sin, death, Satan, and the vices of this world. He won our victory. And oh, what a blessing that is for you and I today. Jesus entering to Jerusalem, it would, would mark the beginning of that change that would change the world. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, there's a change that took place at Calvary. Excuse me just a moment. Got to discuss my backrest. And, and it would change the world, and it has changed our hearts and our lives by knowing Christ as that person will say. Turn with me if you would like to, or just listen as I read to you Isaiah 53, 1 through 6. Who hath believed and report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord extended? For he shall grow up before you as a tender plant, and as a root out of the dry ground. He hath no, no uh, form, no commonness, and when, when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we would desire of him. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not, surely. He had bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him smitten of God and afflicted. But that's a conjunction that now brings him to what happened. But... He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And hallelujah, with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Now I want you to understand, my voice may not be the best, but I was told when I was in hospital, I would never talk again. My voice is coming back and it's getting stronger each week. So by the time I get back to church with the help of a microphone, and I'm not using anything except a computer, I'm a cheering squad here, Drew and Tiff. Uh, that's, that's what I got, but I got the best. But my voice is getting stronger. So if I sound a little bit different than I normally do, it's because I was told I would have a trait in the rest of my life, and I would probably never be able to talk again when I'm talking. Praise the Lord. This passage that I just read to you, it marks a uh, clarity there that God has had a plan for our salvation before the very foundation of the world. If you go back to Genesis, you can see that God was in control, and he did have a plan. He had a plan for you and I. So this passage, what would you say this passage is, Pastor? I would say this passage, even in the Old Testament, is one of grace. You get the full grace through Jesus. It all came to him. He made grace available. G-R-A-C-E. The acrostic is God's riches at Christ's expense. A theme would go like this. God's grace to man is best seen in Jesus Christ. And that is so true. Great value to win people to the Lord. Think of the price that was paid. Think what Jesus did. He laid down his life for us who deserve hell, who deserve to die 
But he made a way today that we today could live forevermore with him. Also, it has great devotional value today. It's a guide. And as you thank God for your salvation, to know that he has guided you into redemption through the blood that he shed. This passage is about dying for sinners. And knowing this, this passage has also great confidence value. Confidence in your salvation. This idea of having and losing your salvation, it's not of God. And if you're believing that, then folks, listen, you're believing today a doctrine that is not supported by God's word. I'm so glad today, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's what salvation is. Calling on him and receiving him into your heart and your life. Now these verses get us to the scene, uh, excuse me, of the crucifixion. But it does it in an unusual way. Isaiah 53 is about Jesus and it speaks so remarkably plain about Jesus 700 years before his coming. Isn't that amazing? Isaiah, under the leadership of the Spirit of God, would record exactly, word for word, event for event, everything that would happen. He recorded it exactly as it would occur. This passage has also great evangelistic value. Because the trouble you and I are in is the worst that you can ever imagine or think. That's my first point. We were in trouble with God. We were apart from Him. So the trouble sinners are in is deeper than you ever perceive or perhaps think. The chief, the grief, he speaks of that, the grief and sorrow, it's heavy. Verse 4 of Isaiah 53, it gives evidence of this very fact. Why has he borne our grief and carried our sorrows? Why did, he, why, did, why did he do that? Why did Jesus come? The reason is those griefs and sorrows are too heavy for us. You can't bear your own sins. You don't have a solution for your sins. But at the cross, it's when Jesus, he carried our griefs and our sorrows, if it were his own. He bore that. He carried that. He died for that. But he got victory over that. Praise God. That word grief, it represents the very damage that sin can bring. Sin brings damage. Sin brings grief. Sin destroys. Sin brings death. Sin brings separation. Also, our transgressions are real. You know, for he says he was wounded for our transgressions. Transgressions? It, the purpose, you understand, is on the purpose that we commit sins. We sit, commit sins by omission and commission. Things we leave out, things that we commit. But understand, sin is not an accident. Sin causes an effect on everything, on everyone, and it's reason for him to be wounded for us. It's the reason he came to die for us. Further, he was crushed for our iniquities. Iniquities are our collective sins that displays our fallen nature, and we're all guilty of that. So the reason we sin is because we're sinners. But through the cross, Jesus gives us peace with God. Hallelujah. Peace that surpasses all understanding. So Jesus got the wounds, but we got the healing. With his stripes, glory to God. He said we are healed. Second point, Jesus is better than you can ever imagine. <clears throat> Excuse me, he was deity. He is deity. He's divine. What do you mean by that? He is God. He's the second person of the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. And let me tell you what else, friend. He is worthy of our worship. To worship Him today. How people can lay out a church and not worship Him. How today they can live their life carelessly and haphazardly 
I don't understand and profess to be Christians. Listen, you need to worship him. And he has designated the house of God as a place for us to gather. <clears throat> Excuse me, he's also sovereign. This means he's in control. What you can't do, he can do because he can do all things exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think. He's in control of what's going on in our world. No one can believe unless God is revealed. And he revealed himself through his son. We pray that God's will that he will reveal himself to the lost. And if you're in this church today, lost and don't know Christ, see yourself as you are, your sinner. Say that Christ died for your sins and ask him to forgive you and come into your heart and receive him today. I pray you will believe and receive this salvation that he has provided. Jesus is humble. You know, he did what he did that we might gain his righteousness. Why did Jesus endure all that he did for sinners? That brings me to my third point, my final point. In Jesus, God's grace gets people out of trouble. We're all in that same mess. Verse 5 and 6 are the very heartbeat of this passage. This is the centrality of the cross. This is what it's all about. This is where your life is changed. This is where you have hope. This is where you get heaven. This is where you get changed. So he was wounded and he was bruised and all the things he suffered was for us. Today, realizing he suffered for us, he was bruised. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was wounded for our transgressions. And he did this to make us acceptable unto God. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. But glory to God, listen, in the punishment that he bore, we get grace. Grace. You can't purchase it. You can't deliberate with it. You today get it from God. And with his stripes, praise God, we're healed. It's his death on the cross that deals with our condition. This is the very divine act that God provided. You know, it started when he came into the world. It also was culminated and brought through the the road there to Jerusalem on Palm Sunday that would be the path that Jesus would follow to provide glorious redemption for you and I. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. You know, I pray, I sincerely desire that you will come to him today. For he is your only answer. He's the only way you can get out of trouble. And friend, that trouble is your sin. And that trouble is you're lost. But Jesus has made a way. And not only that, we all have struggles and troubles. I've had them now almost three months. And actually more. This was coming on me in 2021. I knew it was something not right but I pushed it back. I just thought it was something minor, but in the back of my heart and mind, I knew something was going on that was bad. But God spared me. He spared me that I could be with you you today, be with you here today to bring you this message. And he's sparing me that I can stand or rather sit behind that pulpit next Sunday and deliver the message of God about the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ to you in person. Does that touch your heart? It certainly touches mine. Because you're looking at someone talking to you this morning that clinically, medically, science, medical science says I should have been dead. Tiff and Drew should have already buried me. They didn't have to. For God spared me. He brought me through the trouble of sickness. Maybe you got trouble in your life, in relationship. Maybe you got trouble today at home. Maybe today you got trouble in your life or by sickness. I'm glad there is a solution. 
It was purchased at the cross. And he said, with my stripes. The stripes, the beating, the blood, the cross, the resurrection, it was all for you and I. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man Jesus, or he laid down his life for his friends. I pray you know him today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a few moments. I trust you got one of the little communion cups, just like I'm holding. It's got the wafer and the juice. And if you didn't, raise your hand. I'll pause for a moment and give opportunity for you to take or raise your hand and get the little cup as we now will go into a season of communion. At the end of this communion, Tom will come and offer an invitation. I love you, and God bless you. We're going into the Lord's Supper. The nature of the Lord's Supper, it is not a sacrament, a sacrament but it's symbolic of the ordinance that God left the church. The Lord's Supper is a meal of joy, and realizing that not of sorrow, all of our service to God should be filled with joy and realizing not with dread or sorrow or being mundane. It should be with the joy of the Lord. So the symbol is significant of the Lord's Supper. It's a commemoration of the Lord's death that I shared with you this morning. For in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and 24, it says, We are reminded, do this in remembrance of me. When we observe the Lord's Supper, we remember that Christ, he died for us. It is that proclamation of his death. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six. again, And often as you shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim or show the Lord's death until he comes. It is also the reminder of Christ coming again. For in 1 Corinthians 1, 26, you proclaim the Lord's death till he come. Now, for Matthew 5, the Sermon on the Mount, find Jesus gave these words. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. I want you to remember that word uh, that I'm about to use here, that he went up into the mountain, and when he was set before him, his disciples, and he opened his mouth, and he taught them, saying, now listen to what he said. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for, my, uh, for righteousness, for my name's sake. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall, shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. <clears throat> Rejoice, be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. So folks so persecuted, they the prophets that were before you. You have the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is therefore, or therefore hence, good for nothing, but to be cast out and trodden under the feet of men. You have the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill, it cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle, and put it on a, under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light set shine before men, that they'll see your good works, and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. We read also from the epistle of 1 Corinthians 11, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake, he brake it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do 
in remembrance of me. And to the same manner, also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup is the new testament, the new covenant, the new promise. In my blood, this do ye, as often as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye shall eat of this bread, and drink of this cup, ye do show the Lord's death until he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink of this cup unworthily. In other words, you've got your lost or your sins today, you haven't gotten forgiveness for, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. As I pray, I want you to pray with me. And let's cleanse our hearts that there'll be no image of sin in our lives, that our lives are pure, clean before God. Pray with me. Dear God in heaven, I know that you came to lost to save lost sinners and Lord to redeem us. And not only that, that is through the process of forgiveness. I'm glad that you forgive us of our sins. You cleanse us of all unrighteousness. You blot out our transgressions and you give us new life. Forgive us now, Lord, of anything that we've done by fault, word, deed, or any capacity in our life. We pray the cleansing of the blood for our life in Jesus' name, amen. We're going to partake of the cup. And in this cup that I'm holding, if you'll peel back the first layer, there's a wafer. I want you to take that wafer, and I'm going to read and have prayer, and then you partake of the bread. Now, follow along. The bread, the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Father, as right now, your people are partaking, you can partake of the bread. As they're partaking of this bread, help us to remember of the body that was broken, the life that was given, and the price that was paid for our redemption. Thank you, Lord, for giving yourself that we today can have eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray that you partook of the bread. If not, you can do it now. Now, there's a second layer to your little cup. You can peel that back, and you'll find there is the juice or the wine. The cup, after the same manner, also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as all as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray and ask God to bless this cup. And as I am praying, you can go ahead and partake of the cup right now. Lord Jesus, thank you that this cup represents the blood of our Savior. As the songwriter wrote, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness or remission of our sins. Lord, right now, as we partake of this cup, may we recall the price that was paid, the life that was given, the suffering you encountered, and thank God through all of that, you today have given us new life through redemption. We praise you for the blood of Jesus. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now to the church, to you and I, who are born again, for as often as you shall eat this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. May we be mindful in this holy week that we're in, Passion Week, of the great price that Jesus paid and realizing it was for our redemption. And today, may we give him thanks in all things. As we close this, my voice is not real good but I'm going to give it a try, and I want you to sing along with me a cappella. 
One can wash away my sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. God bless you today. That Thomas will come and offer an invitation for salvation if you're lost. Please, today, Palm Sunday, the beginning of Passion Week, please come and get saved. Someone in the church, a deacon or lady or man, will be glad to pray with you. Tom will be glad to pray with you. Any of our people will. Or today, if you've got trouble that you need help with, as this invitation song is played and Tom comes, I want you today to come to the altar. I'll see you next Sunday. Live, the duck will be live and in person. Then give the Lord a shout for me.